Welcome back to the wood shop. I'm Brett. Today we're talking dust collection. So this is my current dust collection setup. Inside this MDF box is a shop vac and it's one of the louder tools in my shop. So I wanted to address that noise issue. So I made this MDF box and I lined it with carpet on the inside and that works really well. It operates with a remote. I can use it without hearing protection. The one big drawback of this box is there's not a lot of airflow and so the heat builds up in it pretty quickly. I've been using it this way for three years. The motor hasn't burned out and it seems to work but it does get pretty hot pretty quick and there's nowhere for that heat to go. Another big drawback of this box is that it's very heavy, it's very tight. I built it with not a lot of wiggle room so if I ever do need to access the vacuum to change the bag or whatever, it's a pain in the butt. It's a real wrestling match to get that box off. So I do that as little as possible. And then its partner here, we'll call him Dusty, is on wheels. This is a dust right dust separator made by Rockler. You've probably never seen it like this. The dust right dust separator cover is made of, I don't know what kind of plastic, but it's kind of a translucent gray and it's got an inlet and outlet built into it. I used that dust separator as designed for about three years before the lid cracked and imploded. I tried to fix it, it wasn't fixable, so I needed to come up with a new solution for a dust separator. So I went and got a knockoff Chinese cyclone separator and attached it to the top. Um, it is very versatile, it's on wheels, it stores all my attachments and a couple hoses and it's got enough hose length that I can reach every place in my shop that I need it to. I can even stretch it out and vacuum the stairs down to the basement. It has been very handy. Sometimes it kind of gets in the way. Another big drawback of this setup is that the bucket when it gets full is kind of a pain to empty because I've got it strapped together so it doesn't wiggle apart. And the reason I'm making this video is because I'm making preparations to do a major upgrade in my shop. I'm designing and building a mobile workbench slash outfeed table slash assembly table and it's going to have dust collection incorporated into it. So my workbench will become my new dust collection system and I'll be able to get rid of all of this and free up this space which in my tiny shop is uh, a real plus whenever I can free up space. So let me show you what I'm replacing this with. So here's my new dust collection solution. This is the least expensive dust collector of this style that I could find. It's made by Buck Tool. It's got a 550 cubic feet per minute airflow, and it's a four inch hose instead of the two and a quarter inch. So I won't have to have a reducer for my bandsaw or my table saw. Operates on remote. It's not super loud when I'm sitting right next to it. I measured it, it's actually about 84 decibels compared to my current setup, which is about 77 decibels. So only seven decibels louder. But once it's inside my new workbench, it'll be that much quieter. So basically I'm building the new workbench around this dust collector. And I'm actually gonna reuse my dust separator bucket, but I'm gonna have to make a new lid for it. I'm getting rid of the cyclone and all the PVC and going to be replacing that with a new four inch inlet and outlet. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm, yes! That is marvelous how that... Oh, 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 it's very sucky! So far I've made this circle just out of some scrap OSB and that'll fit in, inside the bucket. And then I'm gonna laminate that to another piece of plywood. And this will be a little bit bigger than the diameter of the bucket, maybe by about a half an inch, just so I have enough to grab to take it off to remove the dust. But I'm gonna trace out the bucket here. I'm gonna get rid of that. I actually don't know a great way to find the center of a circle. Um, but this should work. This was cut with a circle cutting jig and I've got a center hole here. So if I get this lined up pretty close to the middle, then I can make a hole in center and use a compass to trace out my other diameter. So 
that enough? Yep. Okay, good. Didn't want to go all the way through. And this part doesn't even really have to be a circle. It could be a square or a rectangle. Doesn't really matter. Just as long as it's bigger than the bucket. It needs to provide a good seal for the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and cut this out with my circle cutting jig. Got that same radius. We're gonna need for here. On the inside of the blade. Somewhere along this line, I'm gonna make a new pivoting hole. I'm make a little notch in here for my jigsaw to fit into. perfect circle. If you want to see how I made this circle cutting jig, I have a video where I made a rotating cornhole board and I showed how to make this jig for the jigsaw. Now I gotta figure out where, where these go. So this will be, I'm looking at this upside down, these will be inside the bucket and direct the airflow like this. These inch and a half machine screws are just the right length for this. Now I can take these back off and cut out the circles. I really wanted to use my router for this, but the radius is too small, so I've got to use the jigsaw. If your wood filler is kind of dry and crumbly like this, but as long as it's not cured, you can still use it. It's not junk. You just need to add a little more lubrication. And turn it back into a paste. By lubrication, I mean glue. Perfect. Just gonna smooth out that transition. Now we'll let that dry and then sand it smooth. And next I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna put a nice fat bead of silicone around this 
edge and then fit it into the bucket and just leave it cure so I have a nice seal around the inside edge. I put this on a Lazy Susan to make it easier. That'll be sweet. Leave that for a full 24 hours to cure because that's what silicone takes. Well now it's the next day. It hasn't been a full 24 hours. It's been uh, 21 hours. So let's see if the silicone has cured. A lot of it squished out to the outside. Hopefully enough of it stayed on the inside. Kind of, oh, I'm getting some on me. So not fully cured so I'm not gonna try to lift that off of there yet but what I can do I think it's set up enough where I can sand the putty smooth that's for sure dry well, I was able to get the lid off I had to carve away at it with the scraper I think that's gonna make a good seal around the edge hopefully I don't have to do anything else to it but we'll see all right I think it's time to test it out the buck tool dust collector had come with three of these clamps, so I'm going to use one of them. I have a tool for that. Not a great fit. Oh. That'll come off there too easily. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna want a different attachment than that. Don't like it. This one I think I'm gonna like though. This is a threaded side and then quick connect to the four inch outlet. Yeah, no bueno. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. I don't have any attachments for this end yet because up until now I haven't had a four inch dust collection system. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use this hose. It may end up getting cut into smaller sections for different parts within my new workbench. But I really want to suck up some dust with this. My shop's pretty clean right now because I'm between projects. This is my project. But I do know one place where there's a bunch of dust. Just out of curiosity, let's see how much dust ended up in the filter bag. Some, not zero.
Not too bad. Wanna see what's in the canister? So it's working like it's supposed to. <laughs> I should probably wear a mask. <laughs>